Welcome to Midlife Customs at Craig's Garage. In this video, I continue working on the 67 F100 and start putting things back together. If you like working on cars and watching DIY videos, then you should hit the subscribe button because that is what I post on this channel. Please take a quick minute to read this disclaimer. I am not a professional, nor do I claim to be. So during this whole build, I kind of knew that I wanted to make it look kind of the way it did and leave it original looking. So now that I got a feel for where it was going and what I wanted it to look like, I went ahead and got a bunch of parts and wiring harness and just a bunch of orders to kind of get it done. And I also knew I was going to want to do this, put the white lettering across the back. Once I seen the roof was white, and all the little white throughout the truck. I really, and you can actually see the pinstripes too. So I really liked the way that started to look. And I looked for silver bumpers, used ones, could not find them. So I eventually went with white bumpers, which I painted to match the rest. And so there began the theme. And that's how the, uh, white started coming together which i actually really 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 started to like and you can just see how nice these bumpers look especially up against the back letters and the roof and how it all starts to tie together so like i mentioned i went ahead and installed american auto wire harness for this truck and I won't go through all that because I just, <laughs> it's a lot of work and I just don't think you'd watch it anyway. But here's a quick video of how I ran the uh, signal switch through and you just tie it to the old one and pull it through. So I took a break and went to a car show that was going on the weekend and since my plans were to remove the drivetrain from my blue truck, I figured this was a good time to take it for one last ride before I did that. And you can see my blue truck right here, hidden amongst the rest. And I got to check out this F100 that had the Coyote installed in it, which is pretty much what I'm wanting to do in the blue truck and why. I'm taking the drivetrain out of that and putting it in a red truck, which leads me to the next section of the video. So like I mentioned, I had planned that I wanted to take the drivetrain out of my blue 67 and put it in the red 67. And it's the uh, 4.6 DOHC that I have all the other videos about and I will be putting it in that with plans for a future coyote swap for me and you can see all the wiring and disassembling the radiators out so begins the process of the drivetrain swap i know it sounds nuts but somehow it made sense in my head and sometimes you got to give up some things to get what you want so i figured this was a way for me to be able to afford and install a coyote in my 67 f100 so finally here it is i was able to take it out and install it in the other truck and that was a big accomplishment that was when it felt like okay maybe this could happen <laughs> After getting the drivetrain swapped, it was time to remove all the wiring from the blue truck. And this is uh, Ron Francis standalone wire for the drivetrain connected to an American Auto wire. So here, here it is installed in the red truck. And you can see there where the gas tank speaker box thing was kind of not going to work because it was sitting too far out when you 
would sit on the seat, you would probably bump into it. So I had to rethink that and I recessed the speakers and also kind of like picture framed the uh, box. So now the computer will sit inside so I won't have to worry about hitting it at all. And one of the last pieces of the build showed up and you could see here that my friend set it up the where I'm running the place so that I could see it as I walk in. And you can see them here, they're Detroit steel wheels, the John R's that just came out. They come in steel. I could have got them powder coated white, but I was afraid that it wouldn't match. So here you can see I sanded them down and then hit them with some white epoxy. This is uh, SBI epoxy, which is really good stuff. And then after that, I covered them. Actually, this is two coats of epoxy, sorry. And then after I covered them with epoxy, I hit them with two more coats of the same paint I did the bumpers with. And now that I decided and settled on rims that I was going to use, I realized that I was going to have to widen the tubs on the bed. These are um, 20 by 11s in the rear and 20 by 8 in the front. So here's a shot of the tubs getting ready to um, widen. And I just widened them 3 inches so that I can fit wider tires in the back. This will also give the time for the rims to cure before I mount the tires on them. Or at least I kept telling myself that. <laughs> so here's what I had to do. I uh, had to cut into the bed just the same width I was going to widen it. So three inches out of the floor. And I just kind of cut that and bent that over so that I can weld to that. Just so that it looks more factory when it's all said and done. So here's a shot of the little strip that I added. Like I said, it was a three inch wide strip. And as you can see, I just tacked it all the way across from front to back on both sides, just to kind of mock it up and make sure it was in the way I wanted. And here's a shot of both of them mocked up and where it would hit inside the bed and it follows the lines. So like I said, it doesn't really stand out and it kind of fits in. It's just gonna look a little bit wider. And here's another shot of it all welded up. And then one of it ground down after finishing welded up all Grind it down to match, and like I said, it doesn't stand out, it looks factory, so I'll try to match that up as best as I could. So now that that was all taken care of, I figured I'd take a break and uh, get the tires mounted on the rims. That way I can finish it all up. Now back to the wheel wells, I went ahead and treated underneath and it just, just some rust oleum paint to cover the strips and the welds and when it came to the top side I was going to do basically the same process that I did with the gas filler cap so I hit it with some black paint because that's kind of what it looked like underneath I could have probably went with some brown but I think the black worked out really well and then I just covered that with some red and then once I was happy with that I kind of did the same process I just sprinkled a little water and some dirt and this and that and then kept slightly sanding until I thought it looked kind of like what the rest or the area around it would look like because if you were dragging something across it you know that it would hit any of the higher spots so that would look more wore out than the rest so I kind of just kept doing that over and over until I thought it looked good. And here's what the final looked like after I sanded it down and I hit it with some clear.
and here's a walk around of the finished truck. If you found this video helpful please hit subscribe and leave a comment and as always thanks for watching